So I'm going to go in the shop and pick his brains. Interview him till he's weak at the knees. It's absolutely disgusting. It's like a snake. Ugh, that is revolting. But it's a bit like fishing. You're sort of still hunting, but you're hunting with the camera. So I've got a whole sand in on one section, a nice chunky piece of squid on the other. They said, you want to see the massive fish that's been washed up on the beach? It's got a horn sticking out of his head. You what? I might be able to get him if I walk him along and go round the steps. That's what they told me to do anyway. Yeah. Well, I am down indeed on the Somerset coastline at an old stamping ground. It is St Aubrey's Bay Holiday Park and it's right on top of the cliff, right with the sea beneath me. Why wouldn't I want to be there with a blue sky like that? Look at the weather. I'm down there with the wife and daughter, grabbing a couple of days away. They wanted a little bit of a break and I wanted a little bit, or brackets, a lot of fishing. Now, the tides are all wrong, I have to go when I go. It's just all the booking is down at the uh, site, it's all we can get. And of course there is really good low water mark, but you can get cut off. So, sort of not for me. It's in a sort of geological, geological, I say that? Geologically interesting place. And just look at the seabed there. There's weeds, there's channels, there's reefs of rock, there's sort of mud and silt that you get in the Bristol Channel. So there's a lot of different grounds there that you can fish over. So join me on this little trip where I'm going to be going down there. I'm not actually fishing from St Aldrys. I'm going to be fishing a ha secret spot. Place of abode is one of the many caravans here to show you around. You've got the oil facilities there, you've got the gas cooker, kettle, sink, toaster, microwave, big lounge, view straight through there. I mean, you can't get much closer to the sea, can you? Short of being in it, having a caravan in the sea. If that's a residential home, really, this look. They are nice. I've showed you these before. I think this is a newish one by the look of it. Fridge. Ideal. I'm calling this a daughter's room because it's a mess. Certainly not my dress, not my size. Shower. I'll just show you briefly because I know there's probably women that are saying, I want to take you fishing there, sir. I take their husbands fishing. St. Aldrey's Bay. Wardrobes. And this particular one we've got in Little Cliff has its own little ensuite there. So there you go guys, now all I'm going to do, all I'm going to do is see Steve in the tackle shop tomorrow, do some rigs tonight, I'm going to check those while the girls watch their TV. I'm going up to try and film a red deer, that you know, get wild ones up here in the deer park. I can't be sitting watching some of the stuff on television these ladies watch, I mean unbelievable. And I can't fish because the tide's out, so I'm sort of stuffed at the moment, so I'm going to do that. Go see Steve, double check, get some fresh bait in the morning, and the first place I think I'm going to try is down on Blue Anchor Bay promenade. Well people, it's all changed. I'm almost rushing down these steps because here at St Aldrey's Bay, I talked to two geology students that are down here. I said, are you guys the geology blood? Blah, 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 what are you doing down here? Yes, we're down here for two or three weeks, whatever. They said, you want to see the massive fish that's been washed up on the beach? It's got a horn sticking out of his head. You what? They're down there now. I don't know if they're trying to revive it with Corona beers. 
<laughs> they won't be trying to revive me with Corona beers because I've just partaken of Michael's Father's Day present of Doombar. Thanks for that, Mike. You got straight down the hatch. So let's get down the beach and see what the hell this monstrous fish is. It could be an exclusive. A horn out of his head. Is it a unicorn fish? I don't know. I'm supposed to be fishing tomorrow, but I've got to come all the way down these 200 foot cliffs to see what the heck it is down here. I think they're down there anyway, actually, these guys. Don't see them down there at the moment. Oh, I got it, they're down there, looking at it. So just seeing it there, zooming in, I'm figuring it's a dolphin. But it's just up the road is Hinkley Point Power Station. Is it anything to do with that? Are they doing some soundings out there that's messing up the dolphin's echo sounding equipment? Let's get down and have a look. It didn't look fishy to me, but I've got to get down and do it. I mean, I was going up to try and film a red deer. There's two things. These guys have got some Corona beer down there. <laughs> <laughs> they've got some Corona beer and they've got a massive fish about three or four feet long that I don't know what it is. I'm figuring it's a dolphin. But you didn't expect that? No, I've got to come and film it, haven't I? <laughs> got to be a dolphin, surely. That's why I think, because he's got some blow holes up Come and look at the front of its head. Blow holes up top there, look. Strange mouth though, isn't it? Yeah. Look, nickel teeth, look. Just teeth. Yeah, very small, aren't they? I was just walking down the steps talking about it and saying they got up there Hinkley Point Power Station, which I know they're dredging or something out there or doing something. I wonder if it's anything to do with echolocation and it's destroying their echolocation. No. Weighs quite a bit. Well, look quite at that, bit. look. Here. Blow off. Blow off. Yeah, some form of dolphin, isn't it? Yeah. I think so. I'm supposed to be fishing tomorrow. Well, I should pose up with this. <laughs> cool. some shark. Yeah. Know. It's past its sell-by date. Oh, look, it's still bubbling here. Yeah. I don't think it's Barbie material. It's bubbling, <laughs> you're right, yeah. Look at that, it's cooking. It's, yeah. it's keeping gases, isn't it, that? Yeah, that must be body gases coming out of it. Dolphin out. Experts, tell us what you think it is. It's got to be a dolphin, but what type, I don't know. Well, guys, put it out the right way. We're figuring that's the blowhole, that piece here was the dorsal, and that was the cordal keel with the two fins going that way either side. And it hustles big time. I'm figuring it's about 80 pounds, 90 pounds, something like that. It's getting bigger as I speak. <laughs> so I'm in the West Coast uh, angling shop yet again, and uh, going to ask Steve about this blue anchor. And in case, you know, there's a decent bit of fish in there. Steve, what is it about that blue anchor? I have never fished here, and I've been down there a few times. I've never got round to fishing it. So what is it like? Um, well, it's just easy fishing, really. You don't have to pay for parking. Thanks for the council at the moment. Not yeah. putting any meters down there. So, That's good news. Um, yeah, a lot of the old boys in that meet up down there. Um, youngsters, ideal place to sort of start fishing, really, off blue anchor wall. Another what was it, high water mark. Was high that, water it? mark, that one. Um, two hours before and two hours after. Generally, the rising tides are best, so sort of like 10 metres on our scale yep. upwards is, is most favourable. Favorable, yep. So yeah. people know with the Bristol Channel, that's 10 metres up and down of water, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. That's a yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's 30 so it's, feet rise and fall of water. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's phenomenal. Yeah. And now, if they uh, let it go out, they can actually get a scratch a few worms out there, but if they can't dig in, you've got the worms here, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, we keep lugworm, ragworm, all the live baits, basically. Um, yeah. Always best to phone and order. Sure. So we've got your order and we'll keep it back for you then. No, I'm going to go down there. Um, your wife and daughter are going to clear off uh, doing a charity shop routine in Minehead and whatever. Yeah, yeah. Have lunch. So I'll have that a few hours here tomorrow. Um, is it worth throwing out small looks with worms for any flatties there? Or? They do get the odd sole off there. Yeah, yeah. And the odd flounder as well. Generally, that'd be what? Night fish, I imagine, a sole, would it? Or not uh, necessarily? Not, not at all. Our water's dirty, so it fishes generally night. All day, it doesn't oh, really? matter. Yeah. Really? Doesn't matter too much. And I suppose the proverbial squid's going to be good there as well. 
squid, sand eel this time of the year. Yeah. yeah. And maybe a handful of ragworm or, or lugworms. Yeah. Would I, uh, if I'm if I, bearing in mind, I've got, only got the four hours here, water tape play, maybe squid and do a, a combo wrap, or would you just fish the sand eel on its own? Um, try try both, you know, obviously mixed together, but on their own equally as well. But squid yeah. is always favourable mixed in with other baits. Yeah. Gotcha. What about crabs down there? Do you get much trouble with crabs? Not at all, there? no. Not, not at all, really? Not at all. Not like the harbour here, but, um, yeah, your baits will stay on pretty well down there. You're fishing onto sand. Yeah. Um, little nuisance fish sometimes when the whiting are around. Oh, like pin whiting. Pin, pin whiting, they'll rob your bait. Sure, but, um, you off, crab yeah. activity, there's not a great deal down there, so you oh, fish your baits for... A good 20 minutes to half an hour down there. So that's a real good convenient, if anybody's on holiday, I know people do, they don't necessarily want to do 10 hours straight through to 3 in the morning, climbing across rocks for a big fish. Yeah, yeah. They just want to get the bait wet that's and it. fish. So you'd say it's a good holiday maker spot? Brilliant spot, not just for holiday makers, for, for all, all aspects of sort of angling abilities, if you like. Yeah, I have yeah. driven along it, but I've never fished it. So looking as you drive along it, if I'm coming from, say, this end going towards my head, any not hot spots, good areas to fish at? Will be best uh, line? A lot, better? People, a lot of people favour where the rocks aren't. So there's armoured rock in front of the wall. Yeah. So a lot of people favour. There's a large area there where there's no armoured rock. Armoured rock's what they put in to preserve the seafront. That's that? it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the keener anglers, they don't mind fishing over the top of the armoured rock. I've got you. And yeah. there's always steps part way along the wall where you can land decent fish anyway. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Oh, well, I should give it a crack anyway and. Uh, I'll have a bit of squid and some sandals off you. And uh, again, pulley panels or rigs of sandals. Pulley panels, rigs. you want to try a flapper rig as well, and don't be afraid to put one in close. Really? You get the odd bass go up and down the, 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 the wall there, you know. Do you get any small eyes or anything come in there? Is that lots a rarity? Small, two weeks ago, there was lots of small eyes, yeah. There was oh, about really? 15 caught over one weekend. Wow. By, by a numerous amount of people, you know. But, yeah. um, spread over. Spread over, yeah. Sandal for them, I imagine. Sandals are, are definitely favourable. Yeah, yeah. it's good, yeah. Oh, good, great. Now, other people, I know most people have apps on their phones and stuff for tie tables. If they haven't, do you do tie tables and stuff in here? Yeah, we sell the Watch It, um, watch it local boat owner's uh, tie table there. Yeah, so that'll cover up and down. down 75, it covers the whole area. I, yeah. I can say, I'll go up and down past mine, Ed, Paul, all that sort That's of thing. That's it, way. you've got a little conversion chart on the back. Yeah. You know, add, add 10 minutes. Was yeah, subtract 10 minutes for Paul up. Yeah, plus or minus, yeah. Plus yeah. or minus on the back, yeah. Yeah, the main thing, guys, is I've said it myself, I said it outside, make sure you do get the tides right here because you there's nothing, there's no water in the steam, it's That's gone. It. It's, it's gone. When it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. And there's like there are you know some good low water marks, but that's yeah. another story, really. Whole different ball game, whole isn't it? different yeah. ball game, yeah. 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 Brilliant. Okay, I'll get some bay off you, Stephen, and I'll get down there. Good, crack on. But you see, guys, it's not uh, too many. Big stones here, so this one's nice and easy to walk over. Even with my poor feet, and it goes down here. I'll show you this way. And it breaks onto the sand here. Or mud, I'm gonna call it. Oh, it's hard, yeah. You can actually see it move when I tread on it. See the sand pushing the water out. And the further out you go, no problem if you wanted to get some worm baits. But of course you can go to Steve's shop or you might want to do some digging yourself. There's absolutely acres of them here. So for those who want to dig, it's definitely say dig between there and the hole, and they're in a U, and it could be between there and here, or there and there. So the worm will be digging a spit out between the two, if you can see that there, between those two marks. No problem here with casts. I mean, not that I can cast 280 yards, but it looks like about that distance out. There's a drop just here in the beach, so it's fairly level, and then it goes down, a sort of a hump bit that goes down there. So a shame I can't reach out from up there. But I don't know whether you can actually wade this when the water's coming in, or this dangerous, I don't know. I'll walk down and show you anyway. So it's gone very hard here, and there's less worm casts. I know it gets squishy further out there. So I think I did dig some. Now look here. 
Look at that. Look at that line that changes. Even got bits of grit there, you see. With shellfish, and I wonder if, if the fish would come in there on that as a feeding area. Where this slight curve is here, it's just a slight dip down there. It, it, you know, I don't know. Maybe you guys can see it sort of falling off here, drops down there, then a secondary hump. So I imagine the water's going to fill up here. You might be able to see the ridges of rock here now a bit better. Yeah, I can see what uh, they mean about if you're bringing a grip lead in here, it's going to catch right bang underneath there. Thought that was somebody's float. And you'd lose your gear, and it's facing the same way. So that reef runs out there. And there's several here, look. You certainly wouldn't want to be casting over that. Going to get squishy there, I feel. Yeah, there's a limpet. Just a regular cone limpet there. A little bit of weed, so fish will run these channels. Looking for food. Don't know if there's any crabs. A few little, I've got to call them water fleas there. Is that what you call I call them water fleas. Somebody else probably got a different name for them. Possibly flat water fleas. Look at the bolts there. What's this? A hundred years ago, the original tidal defence line, and they got washed out as sea temperatures, uh, sea, sea levels rise, and they've had to build that. Who knows? That sea defence wall there must be at least 15, 18 feet, maybe 20 feet tall. I mean, what a day for boat fishing. Sorry, beach anglers, but it is the day for boat fishing. Just check this sea out behind me. There is not a breath. It is absolutely a sheet of glass. How rare do you get that? Unbelievable. Anyway, look, I've got my gear. I've only just literally got here. I've got to get rigged up in an hour. Steve's told me to fish down here. He said, just so look, sorry, anglers, go in and see Steve and watch it because he's got the information and, and he's, <laughs> You can't put the fish on the hook, can he? Of course he can't. But he did say there's sort of two areas. One's right, I don't know, I suppose, midway along the promenade there. The other one's by the Driftwood Cafe. I don't know. He said, look, Graham, just come in and give it a go. Although the weather is superb, it is pretty bad for fishing. Most serious fishermen probably wouldn't do this. But when you look at it, which I'm trying to look at it from the holidaymaker's point of view, is it, they're doing exactly what I'm doing. Maybe the wife wants to go off shopping with a family, a husband wants a few hours fishing, I'm only going to get three and a half hours, maybe four at a push, I'm waiting for the tide to come in. So here, as he said, two up, two down, job done. And that's probably will be enough for most people on holiday, I guess. Right, I've got, that's come in since, that's actually come in since I've been talking to people, not, I joke not. So here is the, the last sort of high tide line along here, just so you know, so the spring tide will be way up there, but their falling tides are getting shorter and shorter. You can see by the lines there, how the tide goes down. Now Steve told me to come here rather than watch it harbour because this is gonna fall away even more tomorrow. I was coming here tomorrow. So anyway, less of this talking, let's get rigged up. Okay, what are we fishing with? Just a standard pulley panel, which you can see there. It's got the two hooks. Steve said, try half a squid and that's what we're gonna try. I've got the grip lead. I'm not sure on small tides in a big bay like this, I'm going to need a grip lead. And you see, there's a pulley panel that works up and down like that. So it's not like a snaggy snaggy here. Obviously, there's stakes and uh, rocks. So now, my luck, I'll be the only person to uh, cast into a snaggy spot, but I'm hoping not. 
So I'm gonna fish those a bait each on those. And then something's making me fish with one of these little rigs, one of Tony's tackle rigs here, I'll unhook it. Look, it's for worm fishing really. So smaller grip lead, three very close hooks here, small, I think they're two over, but they're match hooks, they're very um, sharp. I could put like half a sand eel on and a, a little strip of squid there. So that's what I'm thinking on that one. I throw that out. This is a, so they know, some people always ask me, I don't even know I've had it so long, it's probably 50 years old, I don't know. The Conaflex, I think this was called a super bass, but it's all, no, it's all worn off. Weight three ounces, I think it says. I mean, that's for casting weight. Pretty sure that one's called a, a Conaflex Super Bass. And I use it more for smaller fish. And I thought, if I'm fishing off the, a harbour wall anytime, and I might do that tomorrow, then um, I'm gonna want a slightly longer rod. So there we go, I'm just waiting for the tide to come up. I, if I cast out the boat, I'll be able to get a Labrador. And all that black dog over there. Probably move my gear back this side with the tide, so I'm waiting for it to come in. I'm waiting for this gentleman to go before I cast out, but they said start about 11, so I've got plenty of time. That tide's just got to come over here. I think if you cast too shallow, when the water's out there, it's too shallow, your lead's going to drive into the mud and you can't get it out. You want a bit of depth of water to take the impact of the lead and also to discharge, uh, you know, the hook clip on the pulley panel here. You know, you've got to have a bit of impact. I might even, actually thinking about that, I might cast without clipping that down. Nice one, big experiment. So I've never fished it before. I'm just going to sort of trust the luck and see if I can get one fish. At this stage, even the dogfish trophy would be good. So on the small hooks, I'm going to cut, as you can see, a strip of squid there. Now this has got, if you can see this, beads. It's got a little crimp here. And it's four worms, so you would slide this crimp up like this, look, if I can move it with my nail, up like that. Thread your worm all the way up there and then push this crimp sleeve here back down to stop the worm blasting up the line and away from the hook. So I'm doing the same with the squid. I just put it over the eye there, turn it around and then go through a couple of times. Once like that. And then I turn it around Turn it again like that, and I still slide that crimp down, and it's got there a couple of like luminous beads as well. Now what you can do is put a little bit of bait thread around that sort of top eye bit area there, like this. That just helps hold it and stops it sliding down. For here, I guess it won't matter too much really. And then what else I've done? I've cut. Uh, Steve Sandals in half, and I say Steve Sandals, they are his personal ones. <laughs> I will give you a tip, sand eels thaw out really quickly, so be careful of putting them in the sun, keep them in the cool. I put a little split behind the bend of the hook there just so that when I push it down, it sits up proud like this, and again, I figure a little bit of bait thread above and below the hook eye, like this. Just holds that bait on a little bit more. Some people just cinch it into the meat and pull it uh, and pull it off and just snap it, I put a half hitch on it. And the benefit of this rig as well is that these three hooks, these three baits, and I put this other bit on, I put the tail on, and what they do, they do actually turn, uh, cut the, they cut the tail off so it doesn't spin in the air. All that crimp up, quite a complicated rig. You buy these, I don't make these, trust me. But so that you can buy them in a shop, Tony does them. I guess a lot of tackle shops do them, but whether they do the same complexity of rig, I don't know. Sand deals down here could be pretty good, and it might be the salvation and get me a fish. A little nick, you can see by putting the nick there, that just lets you put the point proud. I'm trying to get in the habit of putting my bait thread into my lead box so can I keep losing it, I don't know about you guys, if I everlasting on a shingle beach, well it could be anywhere, losing a bit of bait thread, in there, stay. Right, so looking at the time, 
20 to 11, I'm a tad early. But the other benefit I find, or I hope to find, with this rigging, see how close they are, these? See how they're really close together? And I think that's a good little circle of, of scent there. And they've got three separate sizes to, uh, and, and two different types of bait there, uh, should they wish. I may well be on a blank, but look at this weather, folks. It's a bit of a sort of dog walking central. That's the, uh, it's going to be the downside, but I think I'll go down and heave this out now anyway. The other problem is being a very hot day. I can see people just coming down here. I might have to move further away from these steps and the dogs go chuntering straight into the water and straight through my line. So I feel if I've got my tripod here, closer to the water, it should be painfully obvious to even those with half a brain cell. There's a man fishing there, give him a little bit of space. Yeah, I know, I know, yeah, yeah. All right, we just lump this out. See if we don't get a crack off first cast, hopefully not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this to the right. This will tell me when it impacts. Oh no, there's a bit of depth there. No, I think I'll put the others out as well. Here comes a dog. I think I will throw the others out. It seemed like there was a bit of depth there. There's a circle out there where you can actually see a little slick coming off where the oil's come out the sand here and the bait's impacted. I'll put that in the centre. I don't think it matters where I'm going to walk along here. I think I'm going to have uh, dog problems. So I'm going to use not a huge bait, I guess about there. Just like that, cut that in half. Keep that in the shade for the second bait because it's got the head on it as well. Now I'm going to leave all that gunk in there if I can and get that on the, on the hook. It's got more juice coming out of it. Uh, sometimes what people do with squid, they, they bash it with a stone between like this, between two stones to tenderize it, you know, get a bit of juice and stuff out there. Some of the oils, they say the oils are in there. So these are, I think these are a 3 0 hook. So I'm just gonna put one at the bottom, about that size. Hey, listen, guys, what do I know? I don't live here. The experts are all falling around laughing, that's fine. Here we go. I bind it up and over the eye. Put a half inch in there, then I've got the second hook, which I probably don't need here, to be honest. I don't know, I really don't know, it's all new. It's just almost looks like straight beach fishing. One or two couple of turns, I go th through like that. I just go bind this onto sort of shank of your top hook. It's just the way I'm doing it. Look, everybody's got a different way of doing it. Probably blank. If I do, I do, but at least I'm enjoying myself. So that's a nice, what I call bite size bait for any fish. I generally tend to use baits that are too big. I'm trying smaller baits. Elephants eat peanuts is the saying. Well, I'm assuming the sunbathing traditional holiday makers position here, as you can see, just lying down. Maybe my base camp, just checking the rods. Nothing happened, they've been out about 25 minutes. I'll probably only get them, bring them in once an hour. I know if they're matchman uh, fish. They're in and out with fresh baits all the time, aren't they? They're in and out, and that's probably why they do so well. But I just figure, with a spring tide, it comes in and it goes out quickly. So I wonder, does that make the fish feed a bit more aggressively hungry? Because they know when that water falls away, it's going to go quickly. So they've got to eat faster. I don't know. It's a theory. It's one of my theories. With a neap tide like these, they're barely going in and out. They're getting smaller each day. They've got more time to browse around. The water's not going to fall out the bay quickly. They're not going to get trapped. Um, so they've got more time to look. And of course, the other thing is a spring tide moves a huge volume of water down here. So that means there's more smell coming off your baits, doesn't it? With a spring tide than there is on a neap tide. 
All these theories and much more will keep me going through the day. The other thing I like looking at all these, they cirrus, cirro cumulus, cumulonimbus, clouds up there, I call them like cirrus. Sort of good weather, fine weather clouds. Something we don't see much of in the UK is that blue stuff up there. Cannot fault the weather guys, cannot fault that weather. I've actually clipped that one down because the last cast he did feel as though there was enough depth to uh, to impact and let the bait come off, hopefully. I don't see much pull on the uh, on the rods at the moment with the ties, so being small ties, I wonder if I could even use a bomb out there, straight bomb. Well, I can see what's happening. One, two, three, four dogs. And again, four swimming lessons. So I am going to have to move away from this spot, despite Steve saying fish here, because it's just, they're going to swim in the lines. This is a different rig. This is a long loop rig, I call it, that one. It's got big, long snoods, no clips at all on it. Just going to lob it out there. So I've got a whole sanding on one section, a nice chunky piece of squid on the other. I'm going to heave it out, and as the saying goes, hope for the best. But a cast to the right, so I gradually can move the rods away from people. So first tip of the day, if you want to move your rods along, just undo the drags and then just walk them slowly along. Obviously your line angles are going to change. And the same goes for if you're getting pushed back by the tide. With fixed balls, undo your drags, multipliers, you can put them in free spool with a clicker on and just walk them back up the beach, it goes out. More tricky when you're following a fall falling tide, you know, it's going out and the tide's going out, you'll find it's a bit trickier. Just don't do it in one big walk because all the line's going to fall into the water and it could go around a boulder, and then when you tighten up, you might get a fish hooking the, around a boulder, your line's all snaked up, don't do it. So if you do move down, the best way really is to do it when you bait up, so there's, if you've got two rods, one's up there, one's here, wind, move, wind, move, wind, move, bait your other one up, go out, cast up, uh, cast out, and then you're, you, you should be okay. So going back up the beach with a flooding tide, pushing you up, usually a lot easier, moving laterally up and down the beach, that's easier as well. And then obviously I can keep away from the doggy woggies. Well the update is zero. I haven't even gone from zero to hero, hero to zero. I've gone from zero to zero. Uh, a lot of white cloud coming over now. So it's cooled off nicely, which is pleasant. My fish are tied up. The tide is now going down from here, dropped a good 20 feet back, and I've got about, well, where's the watch? I've got about 45 minutes left. So it's not looking good. I have not had one bite. The baits are actually coming in better than when they went out. Can you believe that? It's like the fish have actually polished them, re-threaded them with bait elastic, put them in a box and posted them to me. There's absolutely nobody fishing down there. Side. I know the tides are wrong, I know it's all wrong, but you still think there could be one dogfish, a suicidal, hungry, starving dogfish out there. Nothing. So, guys, what else can I do to amuse 
you lot on Mike you go and try and look for these red deer last night I couldn't do it so we're looking at that giant fish on the beach eh? mammal porpoise whatever you want to call it I think it's a porpoise I talked with uh, Steve in the shop maybe it is a porpoise he said they get those down there um, I might go up if it uh, goes really quiet here or if it's anything I'll try and see if I can film some red deer and I personally I don't think I've seen red deer before <laughs> I don't think I've seen any fish before right I'll see you in the next segment of whatever this is going to turn into. I hope it doesn't get too cloudy. Worse, the wife and daughter have hit Minehead's charity shops. They said they bought seven items. Happy days. What a view from up here. Fabulous over the sea, so I'm just fingers crossed I'm going to catch something off watch it here tomorrow. I'm thinking which way I should be going, east or west, because if I go to the east, the sun will be uh, off. Will they be coming out any deer? And if I go to the right, you know, it might be uh, better for filming. So I'm going up basically onto Forestry Commission land. I've no idea, probably gonna like the fishing today, get nothing, but you never know. I might actually see a red deer. But uh it's average beer, I'm gonna say that politely, waiting one and a half hours to watch it for, to be served. A bit annoying when people come in after you and they get served before you, so we won't be eating there again. No way. About one and a half hours wait for bye. It was a deer burger, a venison burger, it was pretty good. Wow, look behind me. Amazing view, all forestry land here. And that's obviously why they have no problem doing venison burgers. I'm gonna ping off and go quietly up here. Unfortunately, uphill. I hope the uh, venison burger stays down. Absolutely amazing number of fox gloves here. Look at that lot, all the way up this forest path. The sun's going down, I guess I've got 40 minutes before it uh, hits the horizon. As you see, a total thick pine forest. Probably see nothing at all, but at least I'm trying. I'm looking down like pathways like this and this is sort of lush green along here it's a forestry commission track back here I can see all the way up there and I figure they might come out along the edges there I'll take a walk down this one hopefully I don't get lost the thing is they've got fire breaks which are gaps and all in these trees, I've done this with Mike before, and it's a fairly dead area. You know, the central pine forest, the needles fall down and just leave a carpet of sort of deadness almost there. I guess they get squirrels in there, that's about it. But you want the green areas like here and behind me. And that's where I think they might come out of the woods and get a chance to see them, but I'm only going to give it about 15, 20 minutes of walking in one direction and I've got to turn around and come the other way because I don't know where I am. There's just a phenomenal amount of foxgloves here. I can't tell you how many's up here. Absolutely a sea of colour. And there's a rise in the ground up there. So obviously I've got to go and look. I see nothing except foxgloves. It's silence I can hear. And maybe I get up high I might be able to see something. It's just an, I've walked up the top of the hill. Well I've no, I've walked up the top of the hill. Halfway up the hill I can see a long way. I can see nothing except look at the colours there people.
it's just as almost as far as the eye can see. Fox gloves. Well, I might not have seen any of the elusive Somerset red deer. My goodness me, what a sunset. I just found some evidence, people. Definitely some spore. That's got to be from deer, I know. Grass inside it. Could be a couple of days old, I honestly don't know. But they do come up. I'm going to go on a little bit farther. I don't want to get caught out. I not know where my way back is. Beautiful colour red. <coughs> Bang. Dindins. Look at that. Oh my god, he's coming towards me, he's a tame one. <coughs> I'm absolutely frozen. Obviously you can hear me, see me, smell me. I'm holding it still in case there's another one coming out from the right. Wow, that's made up for no fish, I can tell you. I've got to tell you, I, I never expected just to bowl up, look down here, just as I'm about to turn around at this crossroads and he walked out right in front of me. I'm gonna sneak up, but I fear I've seen the best of him. Wow, I'm so pleased, I am so pleased to get that. Somebody tell me, is that a red deer? It's bounding off through the woods there. There's the footpath. Well, it's not a footpath, deer park. I can see the actual game trail. Oh, there he goes. There he goes through there. Because I've seen him before. Look, here's the game trail. Oh, oh yes, look. There's a water hole. That's what he was coming down for. bounded off out that way. Now I think I've had a major, major result. I'd best get back while my mental memory, after a pint of doom, enables me to get back. And he came out somewhere from here. There's a wear mark just through there. Wow, we. Got all the uh, timber stack logs here, as you can see. Now we're going to look to the right because there's a big green strip down there. They can obviously hear me, see me. But I got so lucky. I can't see them finding anything to eat inside the forest. They've got to be coming out as the light's going. Doesn't look it with this camera. It's quarter to 10 at night. It is the longest night. Shoy, the shortest day 
that doom was really strong. The longest day and the shortest night, the 21st of June. Well, the sun's gone, people, and I need to get off this uh, bit of this mountain. I've probably overcooked my uh, time as it is. Just got to get my memory, sense of uh, bearings of which track I came down because I could get lost out here. This is uh, part of Exmoor, I would guess, the edge of the Exmoor area. So it's a huge wilderness area, and there, there is a chance of getting lost, obviously. And it, even if it is this time in the summer, there's still a good chance of something nasty happening. Hypothermia at night if I get lost. A right rollicking from the wife because I'm not back on time. And of course, worse, no fishing tomorrow. Look, I'm no hunter, but it's still inherent in all of us, I'm sure. But I notice when I'm stalking anything like this, is you can move forwards towards them in a line, but they generally will spook or alarm, and it goes anti-directional across. So you can move slowly towards them, and they can't sort of seem to zone in on you. But if you move crossways, it sets the alarm bells ringing. I guess humans are predators, the same as a lion, tigers, all that sort of thing. They don't run in a big loop. They go straight, stop, straight, stop. So if I do see anything, I freeze. See what the response to the creature is, i.e. deer, and then see if I can get closer for a shot. I've just seen another one down here, just crossing the logging path. He did unfortunately see me or hear me filming and spooked. And I found, recognised the track, I'm on the logging track. So I'm on my way back now, I wouldn't want to be wandering through the, uh, through the woods there. Not that I'm fighting or anything in the woods there, although they did have pumas down this way, or stories of pumas, mountain lions and all that business. Um, I just don't want to get lost. So I know this is a logging trail, but that's really fun, that was. Last minute, it's nearly 10 o'clock at night, but I can't believe it. Um, and it's still fairly, fairly light. But it's a bit like fishing. You're sort of still hunting, but you're hunting with the camera. Stalking, hunting, looking. So I enjoyed that. Somebody out there just confirmed whether that was, in fact, a red deer. Because I've never filmed a red deer before, ever. We'll be pleased if it is, and... We'll see you guys hopefully tomorrow. Goodness me, I hope I can catch something. Well guys, this is a real holiday makers when I'm down here in Watch It, Somerset, where I fish with Tomo, but I'm going into West Coast Angling here because there's a local tackle shop in Watch It. Talk to Steve, he's a shore guy. I think I might have fished off the pier once before and caught whatever, nothing or possibly a dogfish. Hang on, motorbikes. But Steve does uh, know the knowledge because he just gets holiday makers, beginners coming in, people just want to go fishing. So I'm going to get a bit of information. And the most important thing down here is the time period that you can fish for because, you know, the water just flies out on a spring tide. And down in the Bristol Channel, it goes fast anyway. So I'm going to go in the shop, pick his brains, interview him till he's weak at the knees. There's a man, look, I told you, Steve. Steve. Good afternoon. Yeah, good to be down here again, mate. Um, yeah, nice to see you. As I say, glutton for punishment, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you've certainly got enough enough stuff in here for uh, people. They've got no excuse Shock not... Shock a block. Not, a absolutely right. They've got no excuse not to catch fish, I feel. Now, I'm down here with the family. Got the wife and the daughter. Um, just want to go down and have a few hours, just like anybody on holiday with their family might do. Yeah. I'm thinking, it's, it's on middle of the day tides, maybe down watch it pier. Now... What's the sort of times down at Watch It Pier for fishing? Uh, a on average, you know? Yeah, three hours before and three hours after would be would be your best best fishing there. Yeah. And, and you don't have to fish off the end? Is anywhere along no, the anywhere, river? Anywhere along the harbour. The, the end's favourable because it's easier to land your fish there. So. Oh, I see, for walking it around. Walking seen... it around. If you've got a decent fish, you can walk it around to the steps then on the inside. Oh, I've got you. That's worth knowing, yeah. 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 The decent fish thing is probably out of my realm. But... Smooth hounds. There's a yeah. lot of those at the moment. Oh, really? So, yeah. What are they going to pick those up? When we're talking summertime? Smooth... Yeah, this well now. Yeah, you'll get you'll get those hopefully this week on your holiday. Yeah, um, squid, crab, yeah. all the usual prawn, anything like that. What rigs? Normal? Would it be a pulley rig? Is it snaggy? Tell us a bit about the rigs. It's a bit snaggy, so um, pulley pulley panels will be your your go-to rig, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And distance-wise, I mean, 
distance, this, not, not, not a necessity there at all. Oh really, so 50, 60 yards just to... Even just to plop over the wall, I think the right? fish come right up to the wall and they just follow the wall up and down there. So. Oh really, yeah. any, other, any other baits? I know you do loads of baits here, where else do you stop for baits? Um, we've got ragworm, live peeler occasionally, um, yeah. there's plenty of frozen peelers, um, squid is a good Go to go to bait. Yeah. So for for the beginners, you think that's the that's the one to squid, go for. Squid is the most popular on there. Yeah. So uh, fishing off there, I'd imagine with the Bristol Channel having a lot of tidal flow, is a neap tide better with less flow, or is it too strong off there for a spring? Uh, basically, you can fish any any tide on there, but um, the neap tide seem to be more favourable. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to need what a bomb or a grip lead. What do you think? Definitely, a, definitely a grip. I'm oh, still going to want a grip. You still lead. need a grip lead in the Bristol Channel. In in most marks, you'll need a grip lead. Yeah. From five. Five and six ounces are our most popular ones. So what's that? I haven't looked on the tide table. Spring tide, neap tide, what's that, halfways or? Um, yeah, they're like medium, mediumish tides this week. So um, they're, they are dropping every day. They're dropping, but so they're, fishable. they're perf perfectly fishable for the harbour, yeah. Okay. On the neap tides, yeah. Um, hooks, tell people on the hooks, what sort of size hook, you know, if they want to make rigs up themselves. Um, most popular would be like a 3 0, one, yeah. one with a little bit of spring in it. So if you do get caught up with your hook, you can always uh, straighten it out then. Gotcha, okay doke. You know, decent line, give it a good old tug and you, you've got a chance of getting your gear back. Will you get, um, I know you're bound to get dogfish being a Bristol Channel, smooth hours this time of year. Bass. Out, I'm going to say bass. outside chance of a bass? Outside definitely of a bass off there. But yeah. I've never heard much of ray fishing off there, do they not get many rays? Uh, for, a lot of thornbacks this year for some reason. But, oh really? um, it's, it's quite broken ground so it's not what you'd expect. But, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, there's a... Most weeks there's a few few uh, thornbacks coming in off there. So. Yeah, yeah. I like I like the no distance casting bit as well. That's the, that's the thing. Yeah, <laughs> young, young lads are getting some decent PBs off there. Yeah. Oh, good. And the other thing I like is I can walk to it and it's yeah, flat. Yeah. And it's not all boulder strewn. That's it. And a car park at one end so you can just park and yeah. walk out. Yeah. Easy fishing. What I really enjoyed last night going up in the top of that huge mountain range hunting amongst the uh, forest, the pine forest, trying to find red deer and I got it. So that was good. I wish I could apply all that to fishing but it ain't working. The weather is beyond belief people. It's like, I can't tell you, the south of France at, at its best. Today they're giving 27 degrees. I don't, don't think I even see a cloud in the sky up here. You can see all the part of the town and watch it so I'm down on the pier where Steve from the tackle shop said come as you can see I'll put that up high the tide is still coming in probably could throw out now but it looks like Steve's shop is either late opening or maybe it's shut it's a Wednesday I don't know maybe it shuts on a Wednesday always phone up first because I've only now got yesterday's bait it's like everything's against me anyway I'm looking for what, one fish as normal and as you can see I did a 360 here. It is an idyllic setting. I'm sure lots of people will be coming down later. Um, probably other anglers as well. I guess I'm really early, but I've got no choice. The wife and daughter have gone off uh, to Porlock. They're going to do a bit of, a bit of tourist stuff there. 
hopefully not too much shopping but you know what it's like when you're down for a little break the wind's probably going to come up a bit sort of north northeast i guess there's a bit of northeast in it nothing bad at all but i can see now there's big rocks that i saw at low water there so i'm basically i'm going to aim for casting just to the left of the welsh coast which i won't reach from here with a four ounce lead but there's Aberthaw power station over there and that is a good mark i'm down here i'm all rigged up and i do you know what the first mistake i've made is putting the sandwiches in the sun but i'm rigged up same rigs i had yesterday a little three hook rig there which is probably no good if i get a decent fish but i might get something small on squid strip or a section of sand hill my big loop one there so let's get them whizzed out and uh I've got a nice seat, I could probably sit on there as well. And hardly any walking. I've walked all of 150 yards from the car park. So I've got three small hooks out there and I've got the uh, pulley panel here. I'm sure to lose gear today, just the way it is. I'm trying to see which way the tide's pulling. I think it's just a question of heaving it out and hope. Make sure I don't get any tourists. very shallow very shallow at the moment but then it is what three hours to high water and this is when steve said fish three up three down i'll probably fish three up two down that'd be more than enough for me if i don't get any bites so i'm all set there you go people it's either fishing terrible or the locals know something I don't and think I'm completely stupid or probably doing Facebook pictures of me that strange man on the pier catching absolutely nothing under the worst conditions which I know they are but the bait's in the water so one really big bang on this right hand rod but because he hasn't come back That's annoying to say the least. So I'm running out of bait. Should have bite on the second rod. Again. Hasn't come back, that's weird. Well, little glimmer, glimmer of hope. Three baited that were small. I'm getting stripped off by crabs here. But those two bites were bangs, they weren't crabs. What a little tip you could uh, look out for is if you're fishing off any pier here's particularly but don't put your line like that can you see that so it's running over the top there i put it so the ring is there hopefully you can see that like see the ring would be resting there rather than the line try and get it up like this just like that so that your line's not really rubbing on uh, anything that could be abrasive and weakening your line and then when you do get a fish you lose it
Well, if you can hold a rod for us, just you just just want to jump up there. Might lose it. Uh, if you walk back a tad, we'll have a look at him first. I don't think he's going in there, but it's a big smooth down. Yeah. I might have to walk him around the pier. Well, well, it was fighting, I well, no, I don't know, I haven't said that. Do I take a gamble after spending all these? Probably a good idea. Yeah, if you can wind the line as it goes, if it comes off, it comes off. I'm sure it might. You can borrow this thing if you want. No, that's too, that's too big to get up. I'll walk him around the steps, if you could just watch my gear. Would oh, that... yeah, of course you will. Yeah. I, there's only a little spinning rod out, thank you for that. I might be able to get him if I walk him along and go around the steps, that's what they told me to do anyway. Yeah, that's Moby. right. Moby. Moby. Yeah, Moby. Yeah, yeah. Let's start these down. I thought he meant me. Right. Hold on, let's lift this up. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah, I'll get under him. Yeah, he's on the top of here. Brilliant. I was just baiting up and the rod was nearly over the side. Thank you for that. Yeah, this is what they tell me to do. Have I got another line there? Hang on a minute. I think I'm clear, yes. That, you're clear. Thank you. Well guys, the rod was nearly over the side then. I was trying to bait up, thought it was a blank. I'm going to try and swim him along. He's just too big to... to get in the guy's drop net. This is what they say do, walk it around and some steps around this side. I'm going to bing it off in case I'm out of battery. But at least you can see it. I've negotiated the big wall there. Now going... Whew, round by the lighthouse. Wouldn't it be nice to get, and this is a good fish. Well, well, hook could ping out at any time, but I've got no choice because he's too big for that gentleman's drop net. Now, where are the steps? I hope you can see him there. There's a whole squid. Oh, come on. I hope they've got steps here. Yeah, there are steps. Oh, yeah. We're nearly, but not quite. Let's see how close we can get him. There we go. Feel a wet boot coming. That's what I wanted. Oh, I've lost him. Too slippery. I made all that wave. <laughs> I've got to get the tail. Oh, got him, guys. What a good job I didn't try to net that one. Oh. Oh, there's the hook just on the bottom end. Yeah, that's a nice one. Oh, Jonathan is helping me. Try and get a picture of this one, guys. That is, I'm gonna say my first one off Watch It Pier. So, great fish. Let's get it straight back. Try and get a, oh, I'll tell you what, I don't want to get me up more out of breath walking all the way around that pier or actually winding it in. Do we even try and net that? Yeah. <laughs> there he is. So, what is it? Shark! Whew. See my, my bait threads rolled across the pier. This is what I was doing, getting another bait together. Absolutely pink squid. 
dropped it. I didn't need to run for the rod, it was going in. Look, I'm halfway through binding another bait on. As you can see, that's what about size squid I'm using. And uh, lucky just hanging on one hook. So we take the luck every time. And we just make sure that hook point is proud. That's good. Weed it out. Gonna keep that one a bit short, which is what Steve said, a high water. Right, let's get that other rod out. Well, I'm so mightily pleased to get that big smooth hound. I mean, it's nice just to get a smooth hound, get one that size. For me, beyond belief. I'm starting to cast as the tide's falling down and that way, out ebbing. I've just tried three casts, it's my last three. I'm out of bait, the squid is just absolutely rank. If you met me on the pier, you definitely wouldn't want to shake hands with me. It was black, inkless, skinless, whatever they call it, you know, dirty. Dirty, filthy stuff. Dirty squid, it's called. And it's got all the ink in it. Maybe that helped, but it's pink. It's cooked itself to death. I couldn't put it in the freezer. Not in the caravan, could I? I want to come back to St Albany's, please. Please, I want to come back. And the fishing on the end, float fishing, I think it's gone south, as it were, because this guy's tombstoning off there. You know where they jump in, that tombstoning. I shan't be doing that as an unswimmer. So, it's all over by the shouting people. I've cast up to the left thinking if the tide's falling that way I've taken a risk I might snag up but I vaguely remember somewhere down here it was fairly clear the tide's not ripping because it's small but I've pretty well had it so people thanks for watching this show I'm so pleased you were here to join me when I hopefully it's come out on camera I got that big hound just pack, packing up managed to get my daughter Charlotte as camera woman and I've got another fish on. It's not smooth, I'm frightened I've got my other line. It's a small conger. See if I can get him up. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. There we go. Let's fire it round. Ugh, disgusting. Ugh, don't bring it near me. It's, abs don't, it's absolutely disgusting. It's like a snake. Ugh, that is revolting. That is a beautiful green. Oh, it's gone. It's the screen's gone black. Okay, don't matter. Can you do this? Don't That, guys, is a nice green eel to actually finish off with. It's about to go up my wrist. Ugh. Daughter doesn't like this one. Right, well, I'll get him down, get him unhooked, and get him back. Just leave it nice and close. So that is an absolute bonus, but not for the eel. That's it, just follow us there. That is disgusting, it's like a snake. Eel. Ooh, yeah, look yeah. at it. Can you eat those or not? Eh? You can't eat those. Covered in horrible slime. Yeah. Ooh, look at it. Uh. I've got to it now, it's going to be a mess. I think it's because it's wiggling, I don't like it. It's not like a fish just flops about. Oh, you're going to tell me. Well, that's what they call a green eel, probably because it's green. But to me, it's like a freshwater eel, but do people think this is a small conger eel or is it a species in its own right? And the other thing you can do is this. Here are, Charlotte. Is it? Is it? Yeah, it's great. Oh, and away he goes.